Welcome back to Garden State Growing. My name is Eric and it is freezing here. Can't you tell by the bright sun beaming down on me? Maybe the sunburn I have on my arms and my face? No. It's not freezing. It's 70 degrees. It's a beautiful day out here right now. And what am I going to be doing on this beautiful day? I'm going to be covering all my plants. My tomato plants, they are all getting covered with these heavy duty drop cloth blankets that I picked up from Home Depot. Spending money I didn't want to spend because this Saturday, today is May 7th, but this Saturday, which is going to be the 9th, we're going to get a freak snowstorm. Because I can't even go and cover these plants right now. Because it is so hot out, they'll bake before they have a chance to freeze. So I'm going to have to wait a couple hours to later on tonight till it cools down a little bit. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to speed through it real quick. But today's episode, today's episode is going to be... If you can see right there, my five-in-one plum tree. That guy needs to get into the ground today. I want to do it yesterday, but it was raining and freezing out. And then I'm going to speed through the actual planting of it. I will show you how I, I plant it. It is going to be different from the about Alberta peach. The Alberta peach, I wanted to show you what to do if your fruit tree is root bound, and that is put it in that square hole, okay? The plum tree, I'm going to do differently, and I'll bring you along for that. So let's get moving and get this stuff done today. All right, guys. Now, when it comes to plum trees, there is many different varieties. And how do you know which one you want to plant in your yard? Okay, now for me, the answer came really simply. Okay, I don't have enough room to plant multiple trees in my yard. That's why I'm always getting ones that are self-fertile, that don't need another tree to plant next to it in order to pollinate. Now, if you're gonna get a plum tree, what variety do you want? Well, like I said, the answer was simple. I got a five in one plum tree. Five different plums that have been grafted onto the rootstock of another plum tree. So here I have the Royal Plum, the Mount Royal Plum, the Santa Rosa Plum, I have the Stanley Plum, the Burbank, and the last one is the Blue Damson Plum. Now the 501 Plum Tree erupts into bloom in early spring, and the greatest part is, is that not all of the different types of plums on this tree are going to bloom at once. So this is gonna allow me to have blossoming flowers on this tree for weeks to come. The maturing height of this plum tree is anywhere between 15 and 20 feet high and as wide as well. So you wanna give it a nice space to grow. It can handle partial to full sun, but it does prefer full sun. It is very disease resistant and can tolerate dry to hot climates very well. And of course, because I bought this tree, grown at fast growing trees by their professionals who know how to prune fruit trees and know how to graft uh, branches on perfectly, I have the opportunity to get plums this very first year. Now, as I said before, this tree is self-fertile, uh, but they always do recommend, even if you do buy a self-fertile tree, if you do have the room to put another plum tree nearby within 20, 25 feet, you will see better harvests. I'm going to uh, try to self-pollinate when these do come and the blossoms do come, just to give it that little extra step because I don't have the room to put up another tree. Okay, now this five in one plum tree is hardy through zones five through nine. And these trees are cold tolerant down to minus 20 degrees. So even if you do get those brutal winters, if it stays around, you know, above minus 20 degrees, you should be fine. Now, these plum trees do require about 600 hours of frost time during the winter 
to go through their dormant stage so that when next spring comes, they will blossom, bloom, and produce plums for you. But most of these plums will produce in warmer weather anyway, even if you don't get that long 600 hour winter chill. Now, when you're choosing your location to put this tree in the ground, you wanna to try to pick something on the south side or the west side, and I'm actually picking a southwest side of my house. This is gonna help protect it from some wind, which is going to help it produce its fruits a little bit better. And this tree also likes a soil pH from 5.5 to 6.5. So I am going to be adding a soil acidifier to this soil when, I, when it comes time to planting it. So after you dig your hole and you amend your soil, Fast Growing Trees does ship this in a burlap, a burlap sack that they say you can just take and directly plant it to the ground. I personally have never liked doing that. Uh, I fear, feel it interrupts with the roots growth. Um, unless I saw the roots actually intertwined with the burlap sack, I wouldn't even try to remove it. I would just plant it with the burlap sack on. But since I have inspected this, the roots have not encroached into the burlap sack, burlap sack and it does come off easily. So I am gonna go right ahead and remove it. And then I could use that burlap sack for other things like storing potatoes. Now, as far as watering goes, this is gonna be the same for any fruit tree, okay? You're gonna to wanna to water it slow and you're gonna to wanna to water it deep. This is going to encourage the roots to go down deep searching out that water. They recommend that you water once a week, but during the first growing season, water it twice a week to encourage blossoming, blooming, and plum production. Now, when it comes to fertilizing, your fruit tree if it is younger than three years you want to add a balanced nutrition of a good organic fertilizer and they recommend something around a 10 10 10 uh, and should be given in mid april and early june now if your tree has matured more than three years which this one definitely is because it is around the six to seven foot range they recommend you only fertilizing once a year in mid-April and doing eight ounces of fertilizer for every year that the tree is old. Okay, so this is, I believe, a five-year-old tree. So I would multiply five times eight, that's 40. So that's 40 ounces of fertilizer I'm gonna add to this soil today when I put it in. We are a little bit past April. We are in May right now, but that's okay. I'm still gonna add the fertilizer. A properly fertilized plum tree should grow between a foot and a foot and a half every year. Now, symptoms of over fertilization are scorched leaves and excessive growth. If you find this in your plum tree, reduce the amount of fertilizer that you're adding. Be careful not to put that fertilizer directly near the trunk of the tree or directly on the roots as it can burn them. Try to put it around the outside, keeping at least an eight to 10 inch diameter around the trunk when you fertilize and make sure that you water it in good and deep every time you fertilize to bring that fertilizer down into the soil. The best way to fertilize your tree is to add compost when you plant it. And then every year after that, you wanna to top dress it with additional compost. Compost is one of the best natural organic fertilizers you can add to a tree. Remember, fertilizers don't necessarily feed the roots or feed the tree, they feed your soil. And then your microbes and your worms and everything else digests the soil, turns it into nutrients, and that's what your tree will feed off of. All right, now when it comes to harvesting, your best tasting plums are the ones that you leave on the vine. You can tell when they're ready to pick if you squeeze them a little bit and, they be, and the skin feels a little thin and soft. All right, they should come off with a gentle little twist and a pull. You shouldn't have to rip it off the branch. That means it's not ready yet. Now, unfortunately, plums do not store very well. They are best kept in your refrigerator and if you do in your put them in your refrigerator, you can have them last anywhere from two to four weeks. But like I said earlier in this video, you might wanna learn how to can 
or how to make some jellies or some jams. And these will come out perfectly. I know for a fact that I'm gonna freeze some of these because when my hot peppers come later on in the season, I'm gonna make some hot sauces and I'm gonna add some plum to that to give my hot sauces that nice, sweet, tangy plum flavor. This tree is very disease resistant, so I shouldn't have to produce any sprays or anything on this. But un unfortunately, birds are attracted to this tree. So your best bet to get a good harvest is once you start seeing it blossom and you start seeing plums be produced on your tree, you might want to consider putting over um, a bird net. It's not that difficult to do and it will save your harvest from being preyed on upon the birds. I also have bird feeders laid out around my yard as well as multiple bird baths to give them water and food. But if I forget to feed them one day or there's no water in their in their bird baths because they it dehydrated too quick and I'm at work, they might try to attack my plums or my strawberries or any other fruit that I have. So I did invest in some bird netting that I am going to put over these trees to help protect, uh, protect my harvest. All right, guys, that's all the information I have on the five in one plum tree. I think this is a great investment, especially for my backyard where I have limited space and I can't have multiple trees growing all over the place to, to pollinate themselves. This is the location that I decided to put my plum tree. It's not the most ideal. I get it. I only have about 10 to maybe 12 feet from between the house and my deck, but I'm okay. This tree is going to be a vertical sprawler and then it's going to sprawl out. So as it grows up, yes, the branches are going to encroach, but they're going to add some nice shade to my deck. This is the southwest corner of my house. I still have sun coming from over my neighbor's house. It is close to six o'clock right now. And that is amazing. Okay, the sun comes up over there. It's going to give this tree sun, full sun for more than most of the day. So I'm happy with this spot. Plus anywhere else I would put this in my yard, it would shade out my other vegetable gardens. And I don't want that. I still want to have my tomatoes and my peppers and everything else that needs full sun. This is uh, a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. Normal people, when they put a hole in the ground, they dig a hole in the hole there. And then the cement that they put in here isn't that much. But uh, whoever put this in, the previous owners that were here used, like, it looks like four bags of concrete. So this thing has been wedged in the ground. Deep. Ugh. Ugh. Oh my god. It, it was like they were trying to get rid of concrete, so they said, let's put up a hole. I don't even know how I'm going to get this out of the hole. I'm gonna have to just get medieval on this thing. Let me tell you, a lot more difficult than I thought. Good news is, barely had to dig a hole. Bad news is, I had to get that behemoth of a thing out of there. It must weigh 200 pounds. I had to do like a, a big heavy lifting squat. I think I'd give myself hemorrhoids. That's too much information.
all that grass that I took off from the top, I'm not going to waste that. I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to put that inside the hole, let that decompose and help feed the plant. So let me see how the plant measures up. And yes, I did cut my hair again myself. I don't think it looks too bad. And some sand that I had left in that bucket. Now I'm just gonna mix this all up. You don't wanna completely fool the tree into giving it too much of a good thing because it won't encourage the roots to spread out. I've gotta let this tree know this is where it's going to be living. So in the mix of my compost and the sand and the vermiculite and the perlite, and the coop poop i'm going to be including native soil plus these grass root balls that i've had flipped over back into the hole so let me check my height again okay it looks like they had it buried to about this point so that's what i'm going to continue to do it looks good at this depth that looks about good now i want you to be careful some of these branches here the, um, I'm not sure which one this one exactly is, but it has uh, thorns on it that are about an inch long. Now I'm gonna put these root balls back in here, these grass sod, and I'm just gonna flip them upside down. And this grass, by the time I'm done mulching it and everything, we'll never see the light of day ever again. Now at this point, I'm gonna add my mycos, which is my mycelium. If you watched my planting tomatoes in a raised bed, you know all about this. Uh, it's a fungus, mycelium, mushrooms. It's gonna add a beautiful network to this roots. So I'm gonna give this a good helping. All right, I added a couple bags of uh, the mushroom compost on top of that, but before I go any further, I wanna water this in, and I wanna water it in good and deep. I especially wanna give this plant a good watering because unfortunately, when I got this tree, I didn't have the opportunity to plant it right away, and I had to leave it in its root ball on my desk uh, in that burlap sack, and no matter how much I watered that burlap sack, dry out right away and the tree suffered for it. The leaves, uh, some of the leaves did crumble up and get dry, but I have a feeling it's going to bounce back real easily. All right, so I watered it in pretty good. I'm going to add the rest of my fertilizer, like they said, about eight ounces for every year this tree's been alive. It, it is about a six foot tree. I imagine it's been, uh, I can't remember exactly, but anywhere from four to six years old. So I'm gonna go right ahead and put the majority of this bag down. I'm gonna try to keep it away from the stem and just put it around the outside and let that water in. Now this is only a 552. It is not okay, a 101010 like is suggested. I don't have a 101010 organic fertilizer. Uh, I have to order it. It would take weeks to months to get here. So I'm going to use my fruit tree fertilizer that I have. So that my local soil it's right around seven. I want to bring this down to at least 6.5. I would like six or even 5.5. So I do have my soil acidifier. I did not put this in the hole because I do not want this to burn the roots of the plant, especially because it's been freshly transplanted. So once again, I'm going to put this scattered around the outside, not too close to the roots. Matter of fact, I would like it on the outside perimeter 
because the roots and the plant are going to recognize the more acidic soil and once again it's going to encourage those roots to branch out instead of staying put if i put everything where the root ball is the roots go oh i love it here why should i move why should i go on and i have some commercial mulch some black mulch that i bought to do the decorative gardens in the front of my house the flower gardens which I'm rotten at growing flowers. My wife is good at growing flowers. I'm rotten at it. Can't eat a flower, so I don't care. Well, you can't eat flowers, but you can't eat the flowers that we have. Two to four inches away from the trunk of the tree, that will help prevent, if you put it right up to the tree, you're gonna wind up with stem rot, root rot, all sorts of diseases that you don't want. The mulch is gonna help once again. Weed prevention, moisture retention, and it's going to create a blanket and uh, protect against thermal shock. Especially because we have a winter freeze coming in a couple days and possibly a snowstorm. Okay, it definitely looks like it could use another bag. Let me grab. Well, at six o'clock, my dog howls. The fire engines go off, and I know maybe I should go inside and get some dinner, but I still have a lot to do. So I'm going to spread the rest of this mulch around this tree and then I'm going to take whatever's left over and I'm going to put it around my Alberta peach tree. All right guys, that's it for today. That is planting my five in one plum tree in my yard. I hope you uh, continue to watch and we watch this blossom and grow plums. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get plums this season. I do hope so. Uh, I'm going to take care of it right. So. We'll continue to get updates on this plum tree as the season goes by. But before I go, okay, I want to take the time to recognize three restaurants. Now you could say that this video is sponsored, but it's not because they didn't realize I was going to give them a shout out on my YouTube channel. For the last week, restaurants in Princeton have been coming together and donating meals for people at the hospital. Now, I'm not talking about a couple meals. I'm talking thousands of meals. One restaurant would bring the meals in, okay, uh, in the morning for the people coming off night shift, and then another restaurant would bring meals in for people coming off the day shift, and then another meal, another restaurant would bring in meals and feed the, the, the afternoon shift. The amount of food and preparation that they are doing, and like I said, this is all donated. So I would like to give a shout out to Lucy's Kitchen for the wonderful meal that they sent home for two. So it's not just the thousands of hospital employees that are getting these meals. I get to bring this meal home to my wife. Now Lucy's Kitchen gave us beautiful cutlets of chicken with capers and a lemon sauce a full salad for us to eat, uh, broccoli and vegetables sauteed perfectly with still bite to it, with still vitamins left in it, not cooked and, uh, and, and mushed down to the point where you don't even want to eat it. But it's more than me and my wife can eat and we usually feed our children with it too even though they're not children anymore, they're practically adults 21 and 15 years old. Okay, but Lucy's Kitchen is not the only one that sent us home with a meal. A Korean restaurant on Monday sent us home with Korean beef and again, loaded with vegetables, lime chili rice, uh, another dessert, some more salad. It was so good. I was full and I could not stop eating it. And again, there was uh, the Meeting House in Princeton Plainsboro area that served us chicken on the bone. It was like six pieces. It was like a whole chicken. I had breast and thighs and, and wings and drumsticks. Again, a uh, big flowerettes of broccoli, mashed potatoes, this amazing pesto sauce, salad that had these uh, sun-kissed radishes in them and these watermelon radishes that were just amazingly sweet and delicious. They weren't peppery or bitter or hard to eat at all. I am going to put a link in the description of all three of these restaurants. Now there was more, but I wasn't there because they were on my off shifts. So I am going to give a shout out to the three restaurants that did. So it was Bim Bap 
Bim Bop Bam Korean restaurant. It was Lucy's Kitchen and the Meeting House. I'm gonna throw their website out there. You don't know how much of a treat it is for me to come home and not have to worry about cooking. Allow me to get outside and do the things that I love the most, gardening and planting and everything else. It makes my wife so happy because it's not just free, it's delicious. You guys are amazing right now. You're my hero. You didn't have to do this. You chose to do this and you're not making a dime off of it. You deserve every cent of karma that you got. So that is it for this plum tree. If you've got limited space in your backyard and you can only put one tree in, I recommend the five in one plum. It is the biggest bang for your buck. But you can also go to Fast Growing Trees and they have a five in one pear tree and they have a five in one, I think, peach tree as well. You can do that. They are a tad bit on the pricier size. I think I paid $120 for this one, but $120 for five different plums that's going to uh, you know, grow from June to September. It, it, that's a bargain. Now this project was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be, uh, considering that huge block of cement that I had to come out. I guess it, that's just uh, the culmination of my optimism that things are gonna go right, or it's just my predis predisposition to be disappointed all the time. But with perseverance, with a good attitude, with a positive attitude, with faith, love, and gratitude in your heart, you can turn any hard situation into a positive situation. And right now, even though as hard as it was to plant this tree, I am so stoked about this. I love you guys. Please remember, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that post notification bell, and please share this video if you liked it with your family and your friends. Help this channel grow. I am over 100 subscribers right now, and I am absolutely loving you guys for it. Phyllis, you know exactly who you are. You were the 100th subscriber on this channel, but that doesn't make you any more important or less important than the 99 that came before you or the hundreds that might come after you. It just means I'm giving you a perfect shout out because I asked you and you subscribed and I love you for it. Thank you and thank you for everybody else that visits my channel and watches me act like an idiot all day long. I don't know everything about gardening. I am just an enthusiast. I am here to just go buck wild this year and have a great time and I'm going to make mistakes. I am going to fall on my face, but I don't care. I am going to have successes because like I said, I am the ultimate optimist. I love you guys. Have a great evening. I'm going to go inside and eat that wonderful dinner from Lucy's Kitchen and then I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna blanket my tomato plants. I'm not gonna bring you along for that, that's fine. I will show you in another video how I did it. It's going to be simple, it's going to be easy, and it's going to be quick. No need to put it on the video. I love you, have a great evening. Bless to you all, be safe.